Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to compare two dial tone or dial tune <laughs> snare drums uh, with some other drums that I've brought out here, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, uh, this is a dial tune snare drum, as most of you I'm sure know by now if you watch this channel. I'm very high on this drum. I really love it. I've had this nickel over brass drum for a couple months now, and I've been using it constantly on gigs in the studio. It's just a great drum. And what makes it so great is that you can change the heads really fast and you can tune the drum to any tuning really fast. And I've recently got my hands on this wood version of it. It's finished uh, with this honey maple finish. It looks very nice. Uh, the drum is also as heavy as this drum. These drums are extremely heavy. So if you don't like heavy drums, it might not be the drum for you. But I do like heavy drums. I like the solidity it gives uh, the feel of the drum. Uh, these drums are pretty much tuned close to the same right now. This one being just a hair lower. I've just changed the heads uh, to these Remo Diplomat heads. I like thin heads on these drums and I put Diplomat hazies on the bottom. So it's been my experience so far and I've talked about this in the other videos. The thinner the heads on these particular drums, the better. It's just, uh, they're very sensitive to the thickness or thinness of the heads. So uh, I've been playing with this maple drum here for a couple days now, and I really like it. It sounds a lot different than this nickel over brass drum. So um, I know I'm going to be using it quite a bit. And so we'll talk about the ins and outs of uh, this drum before we compare it to the others. So what I'm going to do is I've got some of my best uh, snare drums, or my favorite, I should say, snare drums. Some are really expensive, some are not. And I'm going to compare the um, brass drums to this one. This is, is a brass drum, nickel over brass. And I'm going to compare the wood drums to this one. So uh, just quickly, I'll show you a picture here of what we're going to be hearing. The metal drums will have the most uh, expensive metal drum, which will be the Ludwig Black Beauty, I'm looking over there to try to remember, but you're looking at the picture. And then um, we'll try a Gretsch 4160 brass drum, that's uh, chrome over brass, as well as an inexpensive Slingerland Jean Krupa chrome over brass, one of my favorite snare drums actually. And then as far as wood drums go, we'll use four of those. We'll listen to a Craviato uh, with the baseball bat top and the 45 degree on the bottom, those are the bearing edges. We'll also listen to one of my favorite wood drums, which is a WFL uh, Ray McKinley snare drum from the 1950s, as well as my Gladstone snare. Everybody knows how great those are. And a Zelkova, a Canopus Zelkova drum, which is a fantastic, uh, unique sounding snare drum. So those are the drums we'll be comparing them to. Now this will be a long video, and I will put the timestamps in the description. So if you want to skip around or you get bored, you can jump to different chapters, but uh, this will take a while to do this accurately. But first we'll give you a little review about this drum. You can watch my other two videos I have on the dial tune snare drum. But quickly, uh, how the drum works is it has two knobs, and these knobs control a cable that runs around the diameter of the drum, and that changes the pitch or it loosens or tightens the head. So on the left side, this knob, this will loosen or tighten the bottom head. On the right side, this knob will loosen or tighten the top head. And both the drums work exactly the same. The one thing that you should be aware of on this um, wood drum, there are some vent holes on the bottom. So there's no vent hole in the, you know, in the middle of the drum like normal, okay? But they are on the bottom. You can't see them when you're looking at it. You can't see them when you look at it from the bottom. So if you get it, get the drum and see those and panic and you say, oh, this is some sort of mistake, <laughs> uh, those shouldn't be there. They're, they're supposed to be there, okay? So the strainer on these drums is this DW Mag strainer, which is fine. It also uses the butt plate that you can change the snare drum tension on the snare tension. It's got three different tensions, loose, tighter, and tightest. So all those have, it's very, very handy, uh, as you'll see. 
and then they both use these pure sound snares. Sticks I'm using today are just my signature Vic Firth Hickory. It's got a little weight to it. I'm going to do a lot of rim shots, so I'm not going to go and use my expensive uh, exotic sticks that I make. So like I said before, the heads, top, diplomat, bottom, diplomat hazy, thinner the better on these drums. I will switch them out in a minute, though, to ambassadors, so you can see the process of switching them out, as well as all these other snare drums. Most of them have ambassadors on the top, so it's only fair. So let's um, listen to these drums with the snares off. They're tuned relatively the same, but I'm going to change it a little. And we'll use this uh, TE Tuner app, which I really like. So you can use that. You can use a tune bot, whatever you want, but or your ear, which was what I recommend. So, so that's registering it as, as a G and a G as well. The timbre is different, obviously. Okay, so... We'll compare these two with the snares on, and I may adjust the snare tension because, like I said, I just changed the bottom head on this one. So this is the drum I've been using for a while. I'm well aware of its characteristics. It sounds great. They're tuned kind of tight. We'll change that in a minute. And this is the same tuning on the wood drum. So I hope this will come across on the recording, but they are completely different sounding and feeling drums. Both great, but different. The uh, nickel over brass is a little snappier to my ears. It feels a little tighter when I play it. The, the wood drum sucks you in a little more when you play it, so it takes a, you know, a little more technique to play it. And uh, it's a little less sensitive right now on the edge uh, than this drum. So the nickel over brass is a little more sensitive right now. Again, I've just receive this so I still have to um, do a little work with it. So let's try some different tunings. The first thing we'll do is we'll release the snares all the way on the butt plate. So what that's going to do for you, and again don't take this for granted, it's extremely Useful. Thank you, DW. So what that's going to do is make the drum more sensitive. Because those snares aren't pressing so hard on the bottom. If you ever play a drum and it's boxy, one of the best things you can do is loosen the snares a bit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to loosen the drums up. Uh, and this is one thing I really like to do. And listen to the quality of the tone with the snares off. So what I do is I will turn these knobs like this all the way pretty low. So I do them together and that's important. So when you reset, the heads are pretty much the same tension and then you adjust from there. Uh, after a lot of experience with the drum, I don't suggest you know, tuning them separately. I like to turn them the same so they're the same tension. And this can go pretty low. And let's try this one. Okay, so roughly the same, maybe a half step off. But let's listen to the tone there because you can hear the sustain. It's a hair lower. So the nickel over brass sustains a little pure for my ears. And the wood, not as long. That, that's pro probably obvious because of the shell hardness of the shell. All right, so uh, 
we'll play this with the snares on now so you can hear a very low tuning. Sounds like an old parade drum. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to change the heads on both of these to ambassadors. So you can hear that, and then we'll compare them to the others. So we'll do this quickly, and you'll see how it works. So again, I do both knobs. Even though I'm not changing the bottom head, I want to start at zeroed out. And there's no setting that says zero. It's more of a feel thing. Okay, and now we're going to loosen this top all the way till you see these wrinkles and then go way past that. Then just lift the rim off like that and then lift the head off. It's that simple. Just like that, okay? Now, then what you want to do is start tightening them up, but just tighten the right one first because you already loosened it so much. And then when you see those wrinkles disappear, tap on it. Then you can start turning the left one and just do them together. And you'll go up quite a bit. And you can feel the tension. So it, a lot of this can be done by feel. And that's what I'm doing now. You just got to practice it and you'll get used to it. With the head, since it's new, will start to crack. And you'll hear that. And then you can start tuning it. Sounds good already. So let's do this one now. And we'll do this quickly. Oh, you know what? While I have this off, let me show you the shell real quick. Some of you, I showed you the other one in the other video. And we'll use this camera just so you can see what's in there. Okay. So we'll go nice and slow. So you can see the vent holes down there. Not much to see here. Let's count the plies. Looks like seven. I could be wrong. My eyesight's not what it used to be. So just a typical wood shell. <laughs> Maple shell. Nothing fancy there. Okay, so now we'll put this on. Again, try to seat it so it's even. It's hard to do. Sometimes it can be a little bit confusing at first. And then get this on, push it, and there, there you go, okay? And then start tuning it up. Remember, tune the top so the wrinkles come out first. And then you'll start tuning your bottom. And now you start your bottom. And then do it by feel. You'll feel the tension. All right. It's still pretty loose. So now what I'll do is I'll turn off the snares and get the pitches kind of close. Close enough for jazz. Okay? So, uh, and then we'll play it a little, see what it sounds like. So now you have full control over the, the snare head, and that makes a huge difference in the feel of it. So what I normally do is I will Can you, I hope you can hear that, how it's making it, first of all, it feels completely different, but it's also making it much more snappy, 
much much more sensitive all right and then we'll do the top a little little higher and get it up there and then we'll do this drum same thing And then of course you have the snare adjustment here that you can use. This is tightest. And this is loosest. It's very sensitive and minute. All right, it's, there's not much uh, there, but it, it does make a difference. Usually I'll leave it right in the middle. And we'll do that with this one too. Now the drums ring a lot, okay? Uh, you know, that's what drums do, and I'd much rather they do that than they're dead. So you can put some muffling on there. I use these little pieces of leather. Just clip it to the rim. There's lots of solutions out there for this. I like this kind of thing because it bounces up with, with the uh, drum. See how that flat moves up. Tighten the snare, it's just a hair. Now the great thing about this, I'm hearing a little bit of an undesirable little ring there, short ring, so I can fine tune that. Right out of there, quickly, okay? Without having to use a drum key. So, you know, the sky's the limit. I've been playing with this thing every day sometimes for hours, and it's so much fun. The more you use it, the more you, you get the feel of it, and then you can just operate super fast. And being able to change heads this fast is incredible. Just a great drum, great rim shots, great cross stick, a classic, really, one of the greatest snare drums ever made. So what I normally do when I compare these things, or I model them, is I will check the tuning between them. So, so we're going to have to bring this one up quite a ways. So sometimes these black beauties will vibrate a little. The snares, the uh, dial tone does not do that, but it is annoying. They all kind of do that. I own three of these things and they all have that residual kind of snare thing. First with the snares off. close right and with the snares on now one of the things about a black beauty and all these Ludwig uh, brass drums is they have this real loose snare response Okay, so to mimic that, what we do, there's a couple things you can do. First of all, you can lower the bottom head just a little. And then obviously you can take this strainer and loosen it all the way a little bit and see if we can get that. Too much.
pretty close. Not exactly, obviously. Uh, th this, th this shell is pretty thin, and it's got, you know, just a particular sound to it. But it gets pretty close in about, you know, 30 seconds. So that's that one. Let's put this back, and we're going to grab... Uh, we'll grab this Gretsch drum. Okay, so uh, this is a Gretsch 4160 from the uh, 1950s. It's in great shape. I have several of these. This one's in probably the best shape. And this is a very dark sounding snare drum. Got the real high die cast rims, so you gotta get used to those rim shots on these. So the, these Gretsch drums, like I said, they're they're darker. It's a great jazz sound, obviously. The shell's a little thicker. It's a little bit heavier than the Black Beauty. All right. Now, one of the characteristics of the Gretsch with all these snares is that kind of snarey kind of sound. So I'm gonna back this off a little. A little too much. And we'll listen to this one and back off the snares all the way on the butt plate. And then here too. Pretty close, pretty close. You see how fast you can get any kind of effect you want. Let's put another one up here. Let's try this Sound King. One of my favorite gigging drums because they're so cheap. You don't never worry about what happens to it. It's a really good sounding drum. So it's very wet sounding, this drum. Very old kind of sound. We'll tighten up the strainer just a bit. These strainers are notorious for having problems. So let's see if we can get that with this drum. I'll loosen the bottom head. I'll loosen this all the way. And then I'll loosen the snares. And I'll loosen the top just a bit. Even more. Four snare drums right there. So one thing that the dial tune does not have that some of these other drums have is that kind of mid-range ring because I think of all the weight of the drum, the hardware. It's kind of a tight sounding crisp drum. These tend to ring a lot, these older brass drums. And the brass on this Slingerland drum is some of the thinnest brass ever used. It's like from a brass instrument, like a trumpet. If you look at it, it'll dent. And that's part of the allure of it, that ring. This first drum is a Canopus Zelkova. Everybody knows what this is. One piece, solid shell. Great drum. The head's a little worn here. Uh, but I'm out of uh, Ambassador heads, so we'll see what this sounds like. I just used it on a session about a month ago. And I cranked this drum pretty tight. It's keeps its body. It can sound a little boxy at times. Normally I would use maybe a thinner head if that's the case. 
but I stuck this old head back on there. I'm going to loosen it just a little. It's a great drum though. Both of them. I have the five inch as well. I love that drum. All right, so the first thing we'll do, as always, is we will match the pitch or get close to it. So this is much lower, as you can tell. Okay, much better. And uh, we'll hear that on Tom. Dying close, okay, and with snares on. So to me, the um, Zelkova feels a little more solid when I'm hitting it. They're very similar in sound. This one feels a little bit tighter. And obviously it's a solid shell, one piece of wood with those crazy razor sharp uh, edges, those, those bearing edges. So. Pretty good though, pretty good. All right, let's try another. So this is a Gladstone Lang drum that was made for me. It's a segmented shell, staff shell. And we're gonna take any muffling off. I love this drum. It's one of my favorite drums of all time. Pitch is a bit different. And with snares, Tighten them up just a bit with this lever. I actually prefer the, the dial tune snare right now. I'll have to mess around with, with it, but yeah, feels great at this tuning. To me, the, the Gladstone feels a little boxy at that high tuning. And again, it's tuned high. All right, let's try another. And the snare sound.
crazy about the baseball bat bearing edges. I think it dries the dr dries out the snare too much. I bought these drums, this set of Craviatos used. I would have picked a 45 for that, uh, for the bearing edges. Uh, maybe I'll get another one made. I love the drum kit. I'm just not crazy about the snare drum. Yeah, to me, there's no comparison. This is way better. Uh, that's pretty clear. First time so far that that's clear. All right, now we'll go to one of my favorite drums of all time. Here she is. This is a Ray McKinley WFL drum, probably late 40s, early 50s, I would think, somewhere around the 50s. Uh, nothing compares to this. I, I'm sure I'm not going to be able to get it to sound like this because with this kind of mahogany shell, the drum is super light. Uh, it's just a great drum, but we'll try. So let's see what we got. As you can see, I tune most of these to the to the same kind of A flat G area. Uh, that's how I tune my six, six and a half drums. I just like that tuning. So that I don't need to adjust anything there. And we'll hear the tom sound. And the snare sound. Okay, so, uh, you know, nothing's going to replace this thing. I would never sell it, and uh, that's just the way it is. One of my favorite drums, like I said, of all time. Feels great. It's got a great sound. It rings forever. Got that high-pitched ring, too, that Buddy Rich ring. Uh, the dial tune is going to be a lot drier, I think, because of all the hardware, the weight on it. That being said, it's a controlled ring. Again, the nickel drum will ring longer than this. Uh, it's a different kind of sound. In fact, well, well, it's buried under there. We'll do that in another video, but uh, they're they're fairly close. Yeah, but that mahog those mahogany shells, the thin ones. I don't know. This drum was magic when they made it. Uh, they all sound different too. I have two more of these things. This is the best sounding one. One of them sounds terrible. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe there's a shell structure problem. And the other one sounds good, but this one sounds great. So that's the way it goes. So uh, we're going to jump over to the drum set here and play both of these nickel and wood drums, the dial tune drums, for you. And then we'll call it a day. Thanks. So here we are at the drum kit with the wood dial tone first. And this is kind of a medium-high tuning.
is a bunch of different styles hitting hard on this thing. It's, it's a big sounding drum. Now we'll do a, a kind of a low tuning for you. And we'll take both the snare head and the batter head down. So it sounds great at that tuning as well. If we crank it up really high, this thing pops. So it'd be like uh, kind of a Brazilian drumming tuning. So all these ranges, the drum still sounds good. It doesn't really choke out. So we're going to go over there and get the nickel drum, or the brass drum, that's covered with nickel, and we'll be right back. All right, we'll start with a real high tuning on this one, since we left off uh, with the other drum on that. As you can tell, this one has a little more crack to it. All right, we'll go a little lower, like a medium tuning. You see how I'm turning both dials together because they're, they're even now, and I just turn them the same amount of turns, right and left.
Again, nice tuning, all right? It's tight, it's got great rim shots, no muffling at all. All right, and now we'll take it a little bit lower. And I like to use this tuning for, for playing jazz. And finally, we'll do a very low tuning. <laughs> 